Dit is Papa Alfa 0, Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 7 mei 2016. Dat is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin is always on Saturdays, will be in English. At the end of the bulletin we first have the Morse code words and after that an SSTV image in PD50 which can be received on smartphone using for instance Robot36 on Android and CQ SSTV on iOS. We start with the propagation bulletin and we also have some DX news and other news. Hello, I'm Bob McCready, GK0FGX, with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2 RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now the radio propagation report compiled by G0 Kilowatt Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 6th of May. The solar flux index held steadfast at 90 for most of the week, but geomagnetic conditions remained unsettled with the K-index hitting 5 on Bank Holiday Monday. The latter half of the week was a little more settled, bringing better HF conditions with only a few minor C-class solar flares. At the time of writing, a new large sunspot number 2542 was just rotating around the sun's limb. This will join the much smaller sunspot groups that are already visible on the solar disk. As a result, NOAA is predicting the solar flux index could rise to 110 on Sunday before declining to 95 towards the end of the week. Geomagnetic conditions will remain unsettled with the K-index forecast to peak at 5 on Wednesday the 11th. The Propagation Studies Committee is pleased to announce the next phase of its experimental HF online prediction system. It's now available for testing, codenamed Proppy. It can provide point-to-point predictions as well as area coverage maps. The system uses the new ITUR HFP prop engine and users can find a link to Proppy at the bottom of the predtest.uk website. That's P-R-E-D-T-E-S-T dot U-K website. The site and software is experimental and the ultimate goal is to move the system onto the RSGB website. Now the VHF and up propagation news. Next week's weather will be driven by low pressure to the south of Britain and a high over Scandinavia and later near the Faroes. This could mean a little tropo from the east coast of Denmark and southern Sweden, but the rest of the country will be influenced more by low pressure and hence a rather showery type of weather is expected with the chance of some rain scatter on the gigahertz bands. Later in the week, the low pressure will probably drift east, allowing a new high to build from Greenland towards the Faroes. As a general rule, as we approach summer, rain scatter tends to improve due to more intense rain cells at a more helpful height for propagation. There have been several separate sporadic E openings up to six metres within Europe recently, with some reachable from the UK, and we are hoping for some more this week, but the jet stream pattern is less favourable. More likely areas for the sporadic E are well south over Iberia and the Mediterranean, plus to the north over the Faroes towards Iceland. For EME operators, the moon's declination reaches maximum on Monday and losses are low, so it's another good week with long afternoon and evening moon windows. And that's all for this week from the propagation team. The final ARIWS schools contact between King's School in Ottery St Mary Devon and Tim Peake on the International Space Station has now been confirmed for Monday the 9th of May at 0926 UTC, which is 1026 BST. It will be a direct contact using the call sign Golf Bravo 1 Oscar Sierra Mike Ottery St Mary, operated by the Aris UK operations team, and the downlink should be audible over Western Europe. Interested parties are invited to listen in on 145-800 MHz narrowband fm and the tx factor team are going to be there to film the whole contact for a forthcoming episode of tx factor for those with an interest in World War II history, an auction of a D-Day Museum storage is due to take place on the 21st and 22nd of May at the Auction House in Cannes in France. Around 800 lots are in the catalogue with items from British troops to French resistance as well as US and German troops. Lots 1 to 418 will be auctioned from 2pm on the 21st, the remaining lots on the 22nd. Public viewing is from the 16th and you'll find a copy of the catalogue online at tinyurl.com forward slash hdwwgd2 so that's tinyurl.com forward slash hdwwgd2 the international museums weekends are the 18th and 19th and the 25th and 26th of june registration is now open at www.radio-amateur-events.org so that's radio-amateur-events.org 
The QTT Hour idea has the aim of increasing contacts and friendships between former professional CW operators as well as between the many CW clubs all over the world. The actual QTT Hour is easily remembered and determined by the date in UTC. So on the first of the month it's at 0100, on the second 0200 and so on. The centre of activity frequency will be the same number of kilohertz from the lower band edge so on the 17th of the month activity is at 1700 on uh, 1817 uh, 3517 7017 and 10 117 kilohertz full details at vkcw.net forward slash qtt hyphen hour vkcw.net forward slash qtt hyphen hour on the 8th of May, there's going to be no 7127 kilohertz news broadcast from Germany because both the newsreaders are unavailable, but news broadcasts will be back to normal on the 15th. Radio amateurs have been asked to listen out for the SAMSAT 218D CubeSat in a post on the Hackaday website. The satellite was launched on the 28th of April. SAMSAT 218D has a Morse beacon on 145.870 MHz, which transmits, strangely enough, SAMSAT 218D. Full details are online at tinyurl.com forward slash hhl9lw8. That's tinyurl.com forward slash hhl9lw8. And that also includes details of where to send reception reports. CERN's Large Hadron Collider went into standby mode after an electrical transformer suffered a short circuit at the end of April. A small wild animal, believed to be a weasel, had been gnawing on a power cable. Sadly, the weasel didn't survive the event. It was totally destroyed. Sorry. But the LHC should be back online soon. The power outage came just as the Large Hadron Collider was preparing to resume collecting data. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. And here is this week's weird and wonderful story. A QSL card that ended up in the hands of Jane Walton in the UK in late February had to cross not just one ocean, but two generations before reaching her. It belonged to a British radio amateur Clifton Trevor Malkin, call sign G5IV. Clifton was Jane's grandfather, and though Jane is not a ham and had never had a QSL with her grandpa, she always kept fond memories of him in his shack when she was a child in Yorkshire. She would hear him make contacts around the world via radio from Barnsley and was charmed by its magic. Two months ago some magic happened again but in a different way. Feeling nostalgic Jane decided to type her grandfather's call sign in the Google search engine and one of the responses that came up was an eBay listing which said QSL card ham radio card and the call sign was G5IV. The card had been posted to the US long ago from Barnsley following a successful QSO in 1939. Now the American seller was asking $6.50 for G5IV's card. Jane bid on the item and now some 77 years later the card is back home to where it all began. The Barnsley Chronicle carried the story of Jane Walton and her reunion with the QSL card in its April the 1st edition, creating perhaps the impression that it was one of those April Fool's tales that makes its way into the public domain this time of year. But indeed, the offering of the card can still be found on eBay in the inventory of e the eBay seller Anne's Books and Stuff. The seller, not surprisingly, has a number of other vintage QSL cards from around the world. But Jane Walton has the only one she'll ever want. It's a piece of her childhood come back home. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Bucci for NJH in Nottingham in the UK.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2NOS. En ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Ik heb vandaag een nieuwe antenne tuner gekocht. Oh ja, wat ga je daar dan mee doen? Ja, dat weet ik nog niet. Ik heb begrepen dat je er de golven mee kunt laten staan. Staat dat beter dan als die golven staan? Ik zou eerder zeggen als ze toch slapen, laat ze dan maar liggen. Dat weet ik eigenlijk niet of golven wel kunnen liggen. Ze kunnen echter wel staan. Zitten doen ze ook niet? Nee, zitten doen ze ook dus niet.